everybody and welcome to another exciting holiday edition of the No Zone. This is a place where we have a lot of fun as we learn. My name is Wanja. And I'm Charlie. Now we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Now we're going to revisit some of the interesting things that we learned on the No Zone. So do you remember the buzzword? Polite. Sorry. May I? Please. Thank you. Officer. Chief, Secretary, Telephone, Provincial Commissioner. Now, make sure that you spot as many of the buzzwords as you can in the following episodes of Junction Juniors. Junction Juniors! Why is Babu so late for a meeting? That's not good enough. Bob, what about you? And the other one who always keeps us here waiting. That's not being polite. Making us wait like this. Ai, who is that really banging at our door? Password. Polite. Spell it. P-O-L-I-T. Wrong. Try again. P-O-L-I-T-E. Yay! Yay. Junction Junior anymore. What? Why? Hey! Wait! What are these marks? Babu! Has someone been abusing you? Please tell us. We are your friends. It's that new teacher, Mrs. Kimanda. Did she do this to you? Babu, did she beat you? I was running to class when I accidentally bumped into her. I was in such a rush that I forgot to apologize. That's when she did it. You should have said you were sorry. I know, but no one has permission to beat me. It's against the law. I'm going to get my revenge on her. You just do it. that revenge is wrong, but no one beats me and gets away with it. That's why I'm quitting the Junction Juniors, so that I don't show any reputation. Goodbye. Oh, no! Babu's going to get himself into big trouble. What can we do now? I'll go after him and see if I can change his mind. I'll go with Brian. Me too. OK, the rest of us will go and inform Teacher Pendo that teachers are beating children at school. Let's go. Go, Junction Juniors! Do you think Teacher Pendo will believe us? Maybe. We should tell our parents and they can confront the school management. That's a great idea. No, 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 no. I think we should first tell Teacher Pendo. She's more understanding. And definitely, she'll have a solution for us. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm tired. No, we can't. How do you even know he's going to talk to us? We'll make him talk to us. He's our friend and he needs us now. And the friend he needs is a friend indeed. I'm so sorry to hear this about Babu. Listen, I'll talk to Mrs. Commander. She's new around here and she doesn't know the rules very well. I promise to sort this out, okay? And I'd also like to have a word with Babu. That way I can go over polite language and manners with him. Do you know where he is? What's wrong? Babu ran off. He said that he was going to seek revenge on Mrs. Kimanda. Babu! 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 Can you see him? No. Maybe he went to the river. Let's go check there.
said that you wanted to get revenge on Mrs. Kimanda. Maybe he's gone to school to look for her. We'd better find him. Otherwise, he might do something he'll be sorry for the rest of his life. Better find him before it's too late. for his actions. I agree, but hitting or beating students is not allowed in this school under any circumstances. There are other effective ways of disciplining children without hurting them. Now let me call in Babu so that I can explain his behavior. Babu. Now what you did today was very naughty and very irresponsible. Can you explain yourself? I was so angry when Mrs. Kimanda beat me earlier. I didn't mean to run into her, but she wouldn't listen to me. It made me so angry. But if you had a problem with Mrs. Kimanda, you should have come and told me. I'm really sorry. I believe you, but you must pay for your actions. Please don't beat me again. Of course I won't. Now I want you to make a long list of appropriate punishment methods so that when new teachers like Mrs. Kimanda come to the school, they know the rules. I also want you to write an apology letter to Mrs. Kimanda and to your friends. Babu, it is important to learn how to be polite, especially to your elders, okay? Okay. And I also want to tell you something. I am really sorry. I should have listened to you, and I should not have beaten you, okay? It's okay, Mrs. Kimanda. I forgive you. Okay. Junction Juniors, I'd like to say that I'm really sorry for what I did to you today. I would also like to thank you for letting me join the Junction Juniors, and I hope that whoever takes my place will feel as welcome and happy as I did. You have all been like a family to me. Thank you once again, and I wish you the best to come. From your friend, Babu. Babu, you forgot something. You forgot your photo. You forgot to put it back on the board. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You're still at Junction Junior. Of course. We never wanted you to leave, even if you threw water at us. It's great to have you back. Go put it, go. <laughs>
is a fraction but 2.5 is a decimal. They look different but they are the same. Decimals are hard to understand. Just remember that decimals don't pass 0.9, all right? Pass one! Officer! Spell it! O-F-F-I-C-E-R. Yay! What's wrong? Something bad is going to happen to the playing field. Something really bad. What? My uncle works for a building company. His company has been paid to build large office buildings right at the top of the playing field. Building is going to start in 10 days. What? The playing fields. But when they build them, where will we play football? <laughs> What else can we do? We can find a way to stop the officers from being built. What can we do to stop them? We are junction juniors. You can do anything. Listen, I have a plan. Babu, you need to go to the Saba Cafe and find the addresses of the provision commissioner, the district commissioner, the district children's officer, the local education officer, and the chief. Write them down and bring them back so that you can start sending the letters of complaint. Lelete and Amishi, you both go to town and tell people what is happening. Ask them to sign a petition saying that they don't want our playing fields destroyed. Try and get as many signatures as you can. Bakari, Go to Mzee Barak and ask him for the old typewriter. Then bring it and see if you can fix it. And then we can tape out our letters and send them to the different officers. What else is there for me to do? Um, Brian, you can be secretary. What? I can't be secretary. That's a girl's job. <laughs> You'll be coming in a dress like other secretaries. With earrings, lipstick, and that new cut. job for girls only. It's an important job. Because I'm president for Junction Juniors, both of you will be secretary. Uh, Maybe we'll learn something about gender equality. Ooh. I fixed it. It's ready to type. And I got all the addresses we need. And we got 50 signatures. But we can get lots more. Well done, everyone. Amisha and Leleti keep collecting the signatures while James and Brian write the letters. The rest of us can write the addresses on the envelopes and fill them with letters. Yeah, I get to play the typewriter. Hey, we are both secretaries. I get to use it fast. Nita told me. <sighs> Stop it. Are we ready to save the playing fields? Yes! Go, Junction Juniors! Yes!
That makes a total of 500 signatures. That's good. We have enough signatures now to stop the builders from building on. We've beaten the builders! to one person who can really make a difference. Who? Our member of parliament. What? How are we going to find her? It said on the radio earlier that she's going to inspect our playing fields at exactly 5.30 today. That is exactly 12 minutes from now. Quick, let's hurry. Madam MP, can you speak to you for a moment? Please don't let this land be destroyed. It's the only safe place for children to play. It's every child's right to play in a safe environment. We have a petition. 500 people have signed it. Nobody wants to lose the playing fields. Hey, I recognize this handwriting. Have you been writing letters to all the people in this area protesting against the building? Yes. The education officer gave me the letter you sent her. I had not been told about the building, so I came to inspect that plot myself. Madam MP, will you help us? But of course. I have spoken to the developers. The building will be built in another place that won't affect the community in a bad way. So, I guess the playing fields are still yours to enjoy. The Junction Juniors always save the day. Yes, they do. I can't believe that they came up with that great idea of signing a petition to stop the private developers and save the playing field. And they're also very kind and forgiving. Yes, they always have a good lesson. Speaking of good lessons, why don't we go and join Teacher Pendo for another session on Hot Numbers. Hello everyone and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready to have some learning fun? Yes! yes! Great. Now today we are going to learn about fractions for the last time. By now I'm sure you all know what a fraction is, don't you? Yes! So what is a fraction? A fraction is part of a whole number. Well done. Now today we are going to use these bottle tops to help us learn how to find a fraction. Uh, Teacher Pendo, find fractions. Have we lost one? No, 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 don't worry. You'll find out exactly what I mean in just a minute. Now, Masitsa, please arrange for me these bottle tops in a straight line. Now, if you have your bottle tops at home, you can join in. <coughs> Let's count these bottle tops together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done. So we have eight bottle tops. Now, Mwai, can you please divide this into half? Okay. So how many bottle tops do I have in each half of the line? Yes, Diana? One, two, three, four. Okay, and on this side? Yes, Ajulu? One, two, three, four. Great. There are four bottle tops in each half. Now that means we have found a fraction. Uh, we have? Yes, we have found that half of eight is four. Uh, oh. I see. Let's try again. Our line has been divided into half. Now let's divide the halves into half again. Yes, Diana, do that for us from that side. Mm hmm Ajulu. Good. So how many parts do we have? Yes, Kishanga? Four. 
That's right, we have four parts. When our line was divided into two parts, we had two halves. Now, what do we have? Yes, Diana? Four quarters. Well done. So we have four quarters. Now, how many bottle tops do we have <coughs> in each quarter? Yes, Ajulu? Two. Well done. So a quarter of eight is? Two. 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 To find a fraction of a number, you divide the number by the fraction of the denominator. Well done. Pressed, Marara. Now, who can remind us what a denominator is? Yes, Yasmin? The bottom number. That's right. Well done, all of you. Now, let's play a game. Who loves to play a game? Me, 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 me. Good. <laughs> so, I have some cards here. Can someone help me arrange these cards? We have some cards here. Now, you will use the numbers to answer the questions, OK? Yes! Good. Now, my first question. Hayamba has 14 carrots. He gives Yasmin seven carrots. How many carrots does he have left? Yes, Ayuma? Seven. That's right. So a half of 14 is 14 divided by 2, which is 7. OK? Yes! Good. Now to the next question. There are 12 avocados on a tree. Now a quarter of them fall off. How many have fallen? Mm -hmm. Yes, Kishanga? Three. That's right. So a quarter of 12 equals 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Now, the next question is yours, Marara. Mm -hmm. So Ocheng has eight mangoes. He eats a quarter of them. How many does he have left? Oh, oh, uh, it's two, because eight divided by 4 is 2. You're wrong. But, Teacher Pendo, eight divided by 4 is 2. Well, you're right, Marara, but what I asked is how many mangoes does he have left? So he ate a quarter. That means he has three quarters left. So what is three quarters of eight? Uh, now, how do I get that? Let's use our line again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's divide our line into four parts. How many bottle tops do we have in each part? Two. Well done. So a quarter of eight is two. Now, we want three quarters, OK? So these are three quarters. So what is three times two? Six. So what is three quarters of eight? Six. Well done, all of you. I'm sure you've all got it. Now, why don't you keep um, playing around with the line and see if you can find more fractions? I really had fun with that lesson. I hope you enjoyed it too. Now, we'll be taking a short break, but don't go away because just after that, Maspidi will be taking us on another one of his exciting trips. Don't miss out. Shake your bones. Welcome back. I wonder where Maspidi is taking us today. Well, I think I have a clue, Wanja. Now, do you like coconut milk? Is it sweet? Let's go and find out. Hello, everyone. Can you guess where I am today? That's right. I'm in Mombasa, in the coastal province. Oh, Mombasa is so hot. I'm so thirsty. I wish I could climb up these palm trees and take one of those coconuts so that I can drink its sweet milk. Ah, oh, look, there is someone selling coconuts. I'll tell him to give me one. Give me a coconut! Give me a coconut now! Ah. Why won't he give me a coconut? I'm thirsty. Ah. Oh no, I've been rude. It must be the sun. It has made me forget to use polite language. I must apologize. I'm very sorry, sir, for being so rude. Please, may I have a coconut? 
Thank you very much. Please, will you open it up for me? Thank you. The white part is called the flesh, and the liquid inside is called milk. But it doesn't come from a cow. The coconut milk is very sweet and refreshing. I wonder what else we can use coconut for. Come with me. Let's go and find out. I have come to Tiwi, near Mombasa, to meet the Tulisubiri women's group. These women use coconut to make many different products, which they then sell to make a living. One of the products they make is lotion, to keep your skin soft and smelling sweet. Let's go and find out how they make lotion from coconuts. First of all, the women remove the soft outer skin of the coconut. This is called the husk. Inside is the hard nut. This is the important part. Next, they cut open the coconut with a panga. Then they grate the white flesh into tiny little pieces. Once the women have grated plenty of coconut, they put it on mats to dry. Once it has dried, they gather it up and it's ready for the next stage. Good, good, good. This is a pressing machine. It is used to squeeze the oil out of the coconut. Look! <laughs> Can you see the oil coming out? Wow! It's hard work, but lots of fun. When they have squeezed out all of the oil, they then pour the oil through a sieve to remove any dirt. Then it's ready to sell. I'm going to buy some coconut lotion. It smells beautiful and will make my skin lovely and soft. I'm very grateful to the kind women for making me feel so welcome. They work so hard, but have lots of fun too. They were very polite too. Goodbye! of fun visiting all these places and meeting a lot of new people oh yes i'm sure that he does but hey everyone what would you do if someone was abusing your rights let's join my speedy and learn more hello everyone can you guess what is out there today I've come to Westlands Primary School in Nairobi. I have something very important that I want to talk to the pupils about. Follow me, come on! Hey, what's, what's wrong? wrong? Leave me alone! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Wow, you're looking good, eh? What are you people on about? We are rehearsing a skit. Wow! Come, come, come. Let's see what this kit is all about. Okay, let's continue with our rehearsals. <laughs> hey, why are you crying? Stop it. Leave her alone. Anne's stepfather mistreats her. And she's even planning to run away. And you kept quiet? You should have reported to the police station. But I promise not to tell anyone. Hey, let's finish our rehearsing. We'll get home late. What if this is really happening to kids out there? What's the solution? That is a good question. Okay, listen up. Did you know that many children are abused every day? Child abuses range from corporal punishment, sexual harassment, child labor, and the rest. What's the solution then? What can we do to help? Report to the police. Tell the teacher. Or the chief. All those people need to know about it. But there's also one other thing that you need to know about. One, one, six. Good. Uh -huh. 
Let's dial this number and get to know what it's all about, eh? Thank you for calling Child Helpline. How may I help you? Uh, this is Maspidi and his friends, eh? We wanted to know this number 116, what it's all about. Okay, thank you for calling Maspidi. Child Helpline 116 is an emergency service for children providing telephone counseling. This is a service where children can call when they're in problems, and we can also refer them to essential service providers, for example, the assistant district officer and the medical officers who work hand in hand to assist children who have been abused. Thank you, counselor. We've learned a lot. Thank you so much for calling Maspidi, and feel free to report any cases of child abuse. This are the 116 offices. Now you know that 116 is the number that children can call to get help. The people who work here are all trained in helping deal with child abuse. The call center has many different counselors who are on standby waiting for phone calls from children who are being abused. The counselors offer help, support, and even parental advice over the telephone. The kind people at 116 can help with many types of problems, such as sexual abuse, being beaten or hurt by an adult, getting pregnant, and many other things. When a child calls 116, the secretary types all the information on a computer and keeps it in a file just in case they need to refer to it later on. No matter what your problem, if you call 116, you will receive help and be treated with great kindness. Didn't we learn a lot? Yes! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Now, children out there, if you know of any child who is being abused, or if you yourself are being abused, then 116 is the number to call. Call this number any time, and there'll always be someone on the other side of the line to help you. 116 is not just a number. Call and get help. Yeah! Now remember everyone, it's very important for you to note that number down. That's true, Charlie. Maspidi has taught us a lot of important things. Now, speaking of learning, why don't we go and join Teacher Pendo for some more learning fun? there and welcome back to Cool Words. Are you all ready to learn? Yes! Great. Now today we are going to look up the spelling rule for past tense verbs ending in Y. But first, who can remind us what a verb is? Oh, I can, I can. Yes, Marara? A verb is a doing word. That's right. A verb is a doing word or an action word. Now, who can give me some examples of verbs? Yes, Muragwa? Running. Running. To run is a verb. Someone else? Yes, Sumaya? Jumping. Jumping. To jump is a verb. Anyone else? Yes? And walking. Walking. To walk is a verb. Well done, all of you. And now that we know what a verb is, who can remind us what past tense means? Oh, oh, oh. Again. Yes, Marara? A past tense verb is a doing word that you add ed because it is something that has already happened. Well done. So a past tense verb is an action word that has already happened. Okay? Yes. Now give me a sentence with a past tense verb. Yes, Mukonyo? This morning I looked at a book. Well done. So looked is a past tense verb. Let's try this one. Today, I walk down the streets. Now, what's the past tense? Yesterday, I walked down the street. I was right. You added ed to walk to make it past tense. So it becomes walked. That's right, Marara. Now, today, I want us to look at some other verbs that have a different spelling pattern when they become past tense because they end in y. Now, who can give me examples of verbs that end in y? Yes, Juma? Try. Try. Yes, Mohia? Cry. Cry. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Sumaya? What about carry? Carry, that's right. Marry. Marry. Well done, all of you. Now let's put these verbs into past tense sentences. Are you ready? 
Yes. Now to the first sentence. We would say, today I tried to tie my shoelaces, but yesterday I tried to tie my shoelaces. Now try this one. Today I cry because my head hurts. Now who can turn that into past tense? Oh, me, me. Teacher, pen, yes, Marara? Now today I cry because my head hurts. Yesterday I cried because my head hurts. Well done, Marara. Now let's look carefully at the spelling of the past tense verbs okay so try tried cry cried do you notice what has changed oh, oh yes I can uh-huh you have added ed but there's something else that has changed look carefully so try tried cry cried what else has changed? Oh, 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 yes, I see, I see. Yes, Marara? The Y has changed to an I. That's right. And the spelling rule is, when you're changing a verb that ends in Y into past tense, you first change the Y into an I, and then add the E-D. So? Change the Y into an I before adding E-D. Brilliant. Now, who would like to have a go at changing some verbs that end in Y into past tense? Now, here is our first sentence. Today, I carry my bag to school becomes... Yes, Muragwa? Yesterday, I carried my bag to school. Aha! Uh -huh. Well done. You remember the rule? Change, Change the, the Y, y into an I before adding ED. E That's right. So, carry becomes... Carried. Well done. Now let's try another one. Today I marry my sweetheart. Oh, Tishapendo, do you really? Oh, Mara, this is just an example, okay? <laughs> so what is the past tense of this sentence? Yes, Sumaya? Yesterday I married. Mm-hmm, that's right. So yesterday I married my sweetheart. So can we all repeat the rule again? Change the Y into an I, I before adding ED. Well done, all of you. You now know the rule, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Shake your bones. a good lesson oh yes it was but now it's time for our ultimate challenge it's time for spell it oh but before all that let's learn how to get creative in the ad zone hi kids this is uncle supu today and we're going to have fun with coconut i think you can make a dough with it so what i need is some maize co coconut shells strong wire and it's soft wire, some pliers, now this is very dangerous. Some scissors, a cutter, again, this is very dangerous. And some cloth, some string, piece of sandal, which I've already cut. So what I'm going to do first is to sharpen it, and I use the knife. If you're not careful, you can take away your finger, so you can ask maybe mommy or daddy or somebody big to do it for you. Take a wire and punch in a hole. Next, I want to put some legs in, and I'll use the soft wire. I need to take the wire a good length. And I use the pliers again. Put your fingers away from the pliers and bend it the center. And I need to leave a space here, a loop, which I'm going to use as the foot. And I twist the wire. I think that's a good length. And I had made another one earlier, which is here. So I have two legs. And I'll use the rubber as the anchor inside the skirt to hold the feet in. So I cut a small triangle. Make sure your fingers are far away the two legs and poke through, all the way through. So the two ends, I bring them through the coconut, through the two holes I punched through, and there, she's already standing. Now for the body, I'm gonna use the maize comb, and I'm going to anchor it to the sharp end here. So I'll just take a piece of wire, hard one, and cut a small piece, and just put it through the top middle part, soft again part. I need limbs, I need hands, 
and I had made two sets of hands earlier. And this I just put it up here and also put it in the same space. One, two, see, almost half human now. So I take my string now, and start with the knot up here and use it to anchor down. Come to the wire and twist it around. And then I go back up and bring it back. Pull and twist it around the other way. And use the rope again to anchor the arms so that they don't come out. Now I'm gonna take the rope and tie it together. Next, the head. And then just poke through and there. This is my dolly. Now you can go ahead, if you want to put some clothes, you can dress her. You can put a headscarf also. I think I'm gonna make a nice spaghetti top for her. Animal, Animal. chapter, building, narrow, respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Sumaya, Muragwa, and Ami Levy. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with their very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat, and it will be repeated for you. Now, each word is worth one point, so the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Samaya, so you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Samaya, so your 30 seconds start now. File. F I L E. Abuse. A B U S E. Field. F I E L D. Chief. C H I E F. Support. S U P S U W P O T E. Cabinet. C A C A R B I N E T. Command. C O C O M A N D. Time is up. Good. Well done, Samaya. Muragwa, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Muragwa, your 30 seconds start now. Call. C-O-L-E. Help. H-E-L-P. Build. B-I-U-L-D. Office. O-F-F-I-C-E. Station. S-T-A-T-I-O-N. Computer. C-O-M-P-U-T-E-R. Convict. C-O-N-V-E-C-T. Secretary. S-E-C-R-E-T-A-R-Y. Punishment. P-U-N-I-S-H-M-E-N-T. Appropriate. A-P-P-R-O-P-I-M-E. Time is up. Well done. Well done. Please step back. Ami Levy, you're up next. Please. Take your place on the spelling zone. Ami Levy, your 30 seconds start now. Save. S-A-V-E. Type. T-Y-P-E. Guilt. G-I-L-T-E. Assist. A-S-S-I-T-S-T. Report. R E P O R T. Leader. L E D A W L E A D E R. Concern. C C O N C E R. Province. P R O V. Time is up. Well done. Well done. Well done. That was a tense edition of Spell It. I won't prolong the stress. We'll get straight to the results. Now, you've all spelled very well, but there must be a winner, and that can only be one person today. So in joint second place, with a total of four points, we have 
Sumaya and Amilevi, which means our winner with a total of six points is Muragwa. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. Well done. Congratulations, Muragwa. You are today's No Zone Spell It Champion. Well Why don't done. Show everyone your dictionary. Another round of applause, everyone, please. Woo! Very good. Congratulations to all of you. That's right. That was what I call a great competition. I also like the creativity in the ad zone. That was really awesome. Well, now it's time for us to go for more fun and learning while we revisit the Wild Zone with Ranger Rukia. We will, Charlie, but first let's treat ourselves to an interesting story, which is where is Rangi in the African tales? Hello everyone, I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to tell you a story about a family of chameleons who have a very stressful day. I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to look out for this week's buzzwords. It happened one night as the wind blew and the clouds crept in, as the thunder roared and the lightning flashed and the rains came flooding in. One by one, the animals of the forest ran into caves and dens, all seeking refuge from the heavy showers. Even the birds of the sky sat perched in their nests, protecting their little ones and waiting for the dawning of a bright and sunny day. And so, when morning finally came, and with it the glow of the warm sun, the animals returned to the fields, dancing with good cheer. Life had gone back to normal, or so it seemed. Rangi, oh Rangi. Mr. Chameleon, who was horned and as green as the leaf he stood on, had climbed to the top of a baobab tree to look for his son. Again, he cried out, Rangi, where are you, Rangi? His voice echoed through the hills and plains, but sadly, he heard no reply. Rangi, oh Rangi! On the ground below, Mrs. Chameleon was also searching for Rangi, but no matter how hard she looked, she couldn't find him. Poor Mrs. Chameleon sighed with frustration. Oh. Just then, Mama Porcupine strolled by. Excuse me, Mrs. Chameleon began. But have you seen my baby, Rangi? He's been missing since the terrible storm. Mama Porcupine thought for a moment and then said, Chameleons are always very hard to find. You need professional help. Why don't you ask the chief? I am sure she will be able to find him. I will stay and keep searching for Rangi here. And so they set off on a long, slow walk. And eventually they arrived at the chief's office. Excuse me, Mr. Chameleon called out. A small squirrel looked from behind his desk and the chameleon parents explained to him their problem. Oh, dear, the squirrel replied when they had finished telling him the sad story. I am very sorry, but I am not the chief. I am the secretary. The chief is already out on duty. Seeing how saddened the chameleons were, the squirrel added, Perhaps, hmm, you should report it to Zimzim. -zim. The police officer. He is the best police officer in the entire animal kingdom. Filled with a new hope, the chameleons left the chief's office and headed towards the police station. I hope Rangi didn't get washed away by the terrible storm. We may never find our son, Mrs. Chameleon said as they walked along a path where scary looking hawks and eagles hovered above looking for tasty lizards and mice to eat. Soon they arrived at the police station. Excuse me, Mr. Chameleon called out. And Zimzim, Zim, the zealous zebra, looked up from his fire. 
How can I help you? Zim Zim asked. Sir, we've lost our baby Rangi and we can't find him anywhere, Mrs. Chameleon replied. For how long has Rangi been missing? Zim Zim asked. He has been missing since before the break of dawn. It was almost noon now, so Zim Zim said to them, Take me to the place you were last with him. And right away, the chameleons directed him towards the grand baobab tree. This is where we last saw him, Mrs. Chameleon said, by this leaf. Zim Zim looked at the brown branch of the tree. Hmm. As he saw a brown little lump curled under a leaf. Your baby is not missing as he gently nuzzled the brown little lump. He is sleeping. And suddenly, the brown lump moved. It was baby Rangi sleeping upside down and as sound as can be. Rangi opened his big eyes and looked around. He yawned and then said, I, I, had a very nice dream. I remember rain pouring and hearing everyone calling out to me. Mrs. Chameleon smiled with joy as she cuddled her little boy. Mr. Chameleon smiled to Zim Zim. What else can we say except thank you for reuniting us with our baby son? The end. Wasn't that a lovely story? I am so glad they found baby Rangi. Chameleons are so difficult to see. Anyway, that's all we have time for. So goodbye. me everyone I need you to be all very quiet please we are going to meet some very shy animals today can you see them in the trees these are colobus monkeys they have long black and white fur coats don't they look smart colobus monkeys are very shy animals and they like to hide high up in the trees they almost never come down to the ground because they fear as humans Colobus monkeys live in Kenya, in the coastal forests and in the inland high country areas. Look at their lovely long tails. Colobus monkeys love to eat leaves, seeds, shoots, but their favorite food is fruit. They live together in small family groups of about 10. They are very gentle and polite animals and they rarely ever fight. Colobus babies are white when they are born. Their black fur grows when they are older. The mother carries her baby around until it is strong enough to climb trees on its own. These monkeys love to swing through trees. They jump up and down on the branches to help them get high up into the trees to reach berries, nuts and fruits to eat. Many years ago, there used to be thousands of colobus monkeys in East Africa, but now there are very few because humans used to kill them for their beautiful fur. Today, colobus monkeys are still at risk because as humans keep cutting down the forests that they live in. 
Every time we cut down trees without replacing them, we take away the homes of many animals. We must be careful to protect the environment so that animals such as the colobus can live in peace and safety. That's all for now, Nozone Rangers. See you soon. Bye! That was brilliant. I love that story. And I hope you loved it too. Sadly, we have come to the end of today's show. But don't worry, we hope that you'll come back and join us next week. So until then, bye! bye.